Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm JP Tong, and welcome to today's episode of Detox Your Mind. So today I'll be talking about a very, uh, well, a topic that I think most of you would want to know how to deal with, and it's regrets. I am safe to say most of us have done something in our lives um, that we regret. And a lot of times we may not want to handle it, do not want to overcome it. And as a result, we suppress the feeling uh, of regret. And, we, and a lot of times we are not taught how to handle our regrets. Things that we have done and we kind of kick ourselves sometimes, you know, to, because we did something that uh, at the moment we thought it was the best choice, but in hindsight, after we've done it, um, we think otherwise. And a lot of times, because we do not know how to deal with it, it kind of sits, you know, at the back burner and it has some effect on the way we process our thoughts. So today I will be talking about how, you know, what are some of your possible regrets and how we can move on or overcome these regrets, heal from these regrets, and not allow it to continue uh, eating into us, um, affecting the way we process our thoughts, holding us back, holding us back from, you know, from new opportunities because it is a new moment. And... Um, we do not want these unresolved uh, situations to actually taint us from perceiving what is in front of us. All right, so um, before I go on to how we can heal from it, I would like to actually talk about what are some of the regrets that we may have. And as I was um, doing some research online about regrets. There is an article that is posted in tamrimichi.com and it's it is a it is an article written by this person who is uh well his name is Bronnie Ware Bronnie Ware a platinum quality author and it says that he has worked this person has worked in palliative care for for many years. Okay, so it's in the blog, and I think um, Freon, you'll be posting it right in the comment section, and you can click on it to to read on it. And this is and this is what this is what Brawny says um, that in general, because you know, in palliative care, people are dying. So what are the what are the five main regrets or common regrets? when you know that he that that he observed when the when they are dying so the first one is this um, the most common regret is i wish i i had the, i'd had the courage to live a life true to myself not the life others expected of me so i'll repeat i wish i'd had the courage to live a life true to myself not the life others expected of me Okay, and he writes, this was the most common regret of all. When people realize that their life is almost over and look back clearly on it, it is easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people have had not honored even half of the dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made. It is very important to try and honor at least some of your dreams along the way. From the moment that you lose your health, it, it is too late. Health brings the freedom very few realize until they no longer have it. So this is actually something very powerful because how many times have we asked ourselves, oh, what if? You know, what if I've done this? What if I've done that? Um, so it's a lot of speculation of what happens uh, if you had done a certain thing or not done a certain thing. Okay, and the, and the second most common regret is, I wish I didn't work so hard. And this is interesting because um, it says... Uh, this came from every male patient that I nursed. 
They miss the children's youth and their partner's companionship. Women also spoke of this regret, but as most were from an older generation, many of the female patients had not been breadwinners. All the men I nursed deeply regretted spending so much of their lives on the treadmill of a work existence. By simplifying your lives out and making conscious choices along the way, it is possible not to need the income that you think you do. And by creating more space in your life, you become happier and more open to new opportunities once more suited to your new lifestyle. So again, so the second regret is in a nutshell, when people are, you know, uh, people are just too bogged down with their careers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but there are, um, there are consequences. There are consequences. So according to, to uh, Bronny, um, I'm not sure if it's a male or female, um, excuse me if, if I said he and you or she and like and vice versa but uh, you get my point so so this person said that well that that's this is the second most common regret okay for people who are passing away so it is something to think about all right so this can be so and the third most common is I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings many people suppress their feelings in order to keep peace with others as a result, they settled for a mediocre existence and never became who they were truly capable of becoming. Many developed illnesses relating to the bitterness and resentment they carried as a result. Okay, I'll repeat. Many developed illnesses relating to the bitterness and resentment they carried as a result. Okay, so again, our mental health actually is related to our physical health okay it will manifest physically we cannot and it says it cannot control we cannot control the reactions of others however although may, although people may initially react when you change the way you are by speaking honestly in the end it raises the relationship to a whole new and healthier level either that or it releases the unhealthy relationship from your life either way you win either way you win okay so Expressing how you truly feel, being authentic to your feelings. Again, this is some this is something according to this person is most common. Okay, the fourth most common is I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Often they would not truly realize the full benefits of old friends until the dying weeks, and it was not always possible to track them down. Many had become so caught up in their own lives that they had let golden friendships slip by over the years. There were many deep regrets about not giving friendships the time and effort that they deserved. Everyone misses their friends when they are dying. It is common for anyone in a busy lifestyle to let friendships slip. But when you are faced with your approaching death, the physical details of life fall away. People do, people do want to get their financial affairs in order if possible, but it is not money or status that holds the true importance for them. Okay, so it is not money or status that holds the true importance for them. They want to get things in order, in order more for the benefit of those they love. Usually, though, they are too ill and weary to ever manage this task. It is, it is all comes down to love and relationships in the end. That is all that remains in the final weeks love and relationships all right so again so it says well i wish i had stayed in touch with my friends that's the fourth most common regret number five uh it says i wish i had let myself be happier i wish that i had let myself be happier this is a surprisingly common one many did not realize until the end that happiness is a choice Okay, happiness is a choice. They had stayed stuck in old patterns and habits. The so-called comfort of familiarity overflowed into their emotions as well as their physical lives. Fear of change had them pretending to others and to their and to their selves that they were content. I'll repeat: fear of change had them pretending to others and to their selves that they were content. When deep within they longed to laugh properly and have silliness in their life again. When you are on your deathbed, what others think of you is a long way from your mind. How wonderful to be able to let go and smile again long before you are dying. So these are the five common regrets that this person has observed because he or she um, worked in the palliative care. 
And um, now, so what are some of your regrets? Okay, so these are if you, if you ever if you are interested to to read again the uh, the there's a link at, at the comment at the comment section and you, and you can actually read it again. So so these are some of the regrets. So if for some of you who you know you can choose not to ever say what if and do what you deep down would want to do whatever it may be of course without hurting others without hurting others uh, about it Hur hurting others mean that you will create certain physical hurt to others um and certain and and there are certain uh situations whereby because you want to do things for yourself you may hurt uh your loved ones um who may not understand why you need to do certain things so perhaps communication uh, with them and and explaining to them why you why you feel it is important for you to do what you need to do before it's really too late before you actually regret okay so and the list goes on what you regret doing what you regret doing now how do we handle how do we handle things that we regret and it is something that we are not happy to talk about. We are, we don't know how to handle it. So a lot of times we go through life trying to suppress it or forget about it. But there are sometimes certain events or certain situations, uh, people may trigger that past memory of ours and we feel really bad about it. So the question is this, we have to understand this. So when we think back on the things that we have done or the things that we have said that we have truly regret. Now, when we truly regret something, it, we make a conscious effort not to repeat it. We become very mindful and we catch ourselves if we slip, if we slip. That is to show that we truly and sincerely regret. If we think we regret, but we keep repeating, we keep choosing to repeat that same thing that we re that we think that we say, or we acknowledge that we regret, then our regret is not sincere. It is number one, either to appease others. Number two, to, to actually appease yourself and continue to be in denial, to continue to be in, uh, in denial. Okay, this is something to think about. And either way we think, why do we choose the these actions? Okay, why do we keep repeating things that, that we regret doing? And these are, these are questions we need to ask ourselves honestly. And from there, that's where work starts. Okay, before I continue, I think there are some questions from the audience. Iman, JP, is regret the same as guilt? If different, please advise how we should overcome guilt. Okay, well, regret regret is you regret, you know, you, you kick yourself and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. The guilt, the guilt actually comes in after that. Okay, because perhaps the situation is too great and you feel a sense of guilt whereby hmm, you, it goes deeper than just regret. It is something that you tell yourself that eats into yourself, that eats into the guilt eats into yourself. Perhaps it is a choice. It is a conscious choice that you made knowing that there are consequences, but you still made that choice. And because you made that choice, guilt arises because you knew in the first place that it was wrong and it eats into you. I will talk about guilt in one of these episodes. All right. So, um, so there is a difference between regret and guilt. Okay, Iman. Thanks for asking. So moving along. So how do we heal ourselves from regret? And, you know, I've been meeting a lot of people in Kachara and, and I do get asked these questions. So how do I deal with regret? Then I always say this, if you truly, if you sincerely 
uh, feel sorry for what you have done, although it was the best choice you thought you have made for at that period of time. At that moment, you thought it was the best choice. You went through every consequence, pros and cons of all the choices, and you came up with that conclusion. Okay, so at that moment, at the level of your wisdom, you thought it was the best choice. Okay, there may be a fear factor there. There may be situations whereby you did not even realize there were other options, or you may have said something out of emotion, be it positive or negative emotion. You said something too fast, and you kick yourself for it because. It was something that you shouldn't have said, and the consequences have arrived. So again, it's something that was the best that you can do at that time. So then you learn, you learn that okay, so I made a mistake. It was not the best, the best choice, and you regret making that choice, or you regret, yeah, you you regret having made that choice, whatever it may be. Having done something or not having done something, that was the best choice you could make at that time. So now that you know better, then you become mindful of not repeating that same choice. Not repeating. So, for example, if it is, well, you know, I'm I'm tired of living a life of what others want of me. I think I'm going to be true to myself and live a life that is true to myself. So whatever that means for you, whatever that means for you. Okay. Uh, okay. There are more questions. Iman, if the regret involves someone who is no longer around or has passed away, what is the best possible way to overcome such regret? Exactly what I said, Iman. Just make sure you don't repeat it to other people. Make sure that whatever it is that you have done or have said to that person who have passed away, well, don't say it. Don't don't repeat that same thing to a different person. Okay, don't say it, or don't do it. That's the best thing you can do. That is something to heal from your to heal. If you were to truly, if you're truly sorry and you really sincerely repent. That is what you need to do. So is to raise your, increase your mindfulness, your awareness, so that you actually catch yourself when you do repeat something that is similar in nature. Does it make sense? Okay. So, and that is how you heal from it, because a lot of times people ask me, but I can't get out of it. I I keep beating myself up because. You know, well, makes me feel stupid. How come I didn't see it?、Um, why didn't I have the courage to speak up, or why didn't I have the courage to do something that was true to me? And and no matter how frivolous or how insignificant others thought it may be, but it was something that I needed to do for myself. So and I didn't, and I lost that opportunity of doing it. I have hurt. So what? So. If that's the case, then whatever it is that we want to do or not want to do, moving forward, you make sure that it is fulfilled. Because whatever has happened in the past has happened. We cannot go back, rewind, and redo things that we have done. So the only thing is to forgive yourself for making that choice. See, it's about forgiving yourself. How much more do you want to beat up yourself? How much more? So, putting the the effort to beat up yourself, blaming yourself, you might as well turn it around with that same energy, same focus, same time that you're going to spend on beating up yourself. Focus on something that is more positive, more constructive, so that you can actually do something about it. You see, because if you go even deeper, I'm going to say something that will be quite thought-provoking. But 
if you go even deeper for people who stay stagnant and keep asking themselves and keep analyzing why did I do that and keep beating up themselves, it's because they are comfortable with that action and do not wish to put in more effort to move forward. Okay, it is very thought provoking. <laughs> Some of you may be shocked, but you think about it. Think deep down. Remember what I said? When we're so used to a certain reality, and what was the what is the reality that we've created for ourselves, that comfort zone? And that is, well, we did we made the wrong choice in our lives. It was something that was uninten unintentional. It is not intentional. And you truly regret. Okay, because you thought that was the best choice. Now, if you keep beating up yourself and not forgive yourself and make sure you do not repeat that, that similar mistake in a similar situation and you keep being stagnant, that's because deep down you are actually being, you are, how would I say, deep down you are kind of lazy quote-unquote, lazy, to put in that extra effort to get yourself out of it. So what is the easy way out? Just stay stagnant and just keep beating yourself. It is an easy way out. Although some of you may say, are you sure with what you said? Think about it. Think about it because deep down, it's because we rather take is an easier way to beat ourselves because it's, it's something that's familiar to us by beating up beating ourselves some of you i'm not saying all but some of you it's easier to beat up ourselves because it is familiar than to go on to to go towards uncharted waters which is what which is to put in a lot of effort to make sure you do not repeat this that similar situation and to focus on more positive constructive uh, ways to live your fullest potential okay it takes a lot of it takes too much effort so you rather stay stagnant in your comfort zone and you tell and you actually go round and round telling yourself convincing yourself that that's the only way when you have read so many books about it you've listened to so many talks and yet you still you you remain stagnant and you tell yourself to believe you actually convince yourself that you cannot get out of it okay let that sink in a, a little bit so when for some of you who do meditate or if you don't it's okay but when you have a quiet time by yourself think about what i just said what i just said think about it because deep down you, we all know to have a fundamental shift to heal to forgive ourselves to get to actually bounce out of all this it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of effort and because we are not used to putting in that kind of consistent effort okay the key here is consistent effort if we are not used to that we will take the easy way out which is stay in our comfort zone whatever your comfort zone is all right, so let that sink in and, and think about it. I believe there are more questions. Sharon, is there a way to avoid or prevent ourselves from doing something we will regret later? Is there a way to avoid or prevent ourselves from doing something we regret later? Well, you know what, Sharon, there is no hard and fast rule. That is why it is very important for us to, con to constantly learn and read up. Read up on life read up on what whatever it is that you're interested in and um about you know read on self-help books um well you are part you are part of kachara your kachara member. read me read, read more dharma books because dharma books are, are books of wisdom okay on how the human mind works how reality is read up more on that and and contemplate and practice we have to realize this because we are not, we don't know everything. So, the, so along the way, 
we may make uh, choices that may not be the best. It may be the second best or third best. But at that point of time, at our level of wisdom, that is all we could see. Okay, so we have to give ourselves some credit. We have to give ourselves a credit. So embrace the fact that sometimes choices may not be the right one. But you see, because it is, it, because the choices that we made may not be as favorable, we learn from it. So it is, so instead of beating ourselves, oh, I regret, I regret, I regret, you know, how, how stupid of me, how dumb, you know, why did I do such a thing? We learn from it and that's how we grow. And that's how we become wiser. Okay, we become wiser because we catch ourselves, we contemplate on the choice that we made that we realized was not the best choice and we learn from it. And because of that learning, we actually real, have realizations and that's where we become wiser. So the process is actually very, very beneficial. It's very, very beneficial. So always welcome, uh, always embrace change, always embrace the, the process of doing new things, of learning new things, trying new things. That's how we always evolve. When we keep evolving and we keep expanding, that's where we increase our wisdom and that's where we're able to understand the universe better, we can understand ourselves better and we'll be able to be more uh, empathetic as a result because we understand, because we understand. So embrace that and that, and so that the fear is not there to kind of, um, to, to make it stagnant, you see? Because when, when, when we focus on the fear, fear will always be there because we are, because when we plan on, um, you know, on doing things in uncharted waters, then definitely there may, there is a fear there. So again, focus on what you want to do and just say, and just let the, let the fear kind of come and go. And then from there, you will have your breakthrough and you will learn. And that's what life is. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you, Sharon. Uh, we have more questions here. Lee King, hi Lee King. JP, can we say that regrets do not arise from mistake, but rather from our not taking corrective action after realizing we made a mistake? Yes and no. That's why I said, you see, some people ha are prone to beating up themselves. Yes, we do make mistakes. Yes, we do regret, which is why I say, if we sincerely regret, we will put in the, we will put, we will make the effort to be mindful that we do not repeat the same mistake. But if we realize that we are very lax about about it and we let and we let ourselves slip or we are very selective when i'm in the mood i will catch myself when i'm not in the mood then let you know just let it be and i don't care <laughs> i'm sure that's very common right so then we have to ask ourselves hey do we really regret this or are we just trying to appease ourselves so that we continue to be in denial that's why when we practice mindfulness and when we really want to detox our mind, we really have to be brutally honest with ourselves. Well, you know, if you don't feel comfortable talking to it with, with, with anyone, it's okay. But the first step is to be brutally honest with ourselves. And then from there, we can, uh, what do you call it? We can actually zoom into that issue and work on ourselves and work on ourselves and ask ourselves why is it that we are not sincere about it so there may be another conversation there may be another intention behind it based on our past experience perhaps you were hurt and you said and the question of why me so and because you never got yourself out of it so you kind of blame the world for, for, you know, for making you experience what you have experienced, perhaps. And because of that, it kind of, so it, so it influenced this part of you that whatever you do, 
yeah, outwardly you say you regret, but inwardly you kind of, you're actually happy about it, that you have done all these things that you know are not the best choices. So again, there's no hard and fast rule because we do have other uh, facets of the mind that actually play in. So it depends on what we, which facet we want to focus on and let it override the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is something that we need to be mindful about. Okay, that was a very good question, the King. So while time is up, so this is actually a very interesting question and it's not question, a very interesting topic. It is a, it is a topic that I have personally uh, contemplated on um, many, many years ago. And I told myself there is no longer what ifs and no more regrets. Do what I want to do, uh, which is truth to myself. Okay, something that's true to myself, something that, so I don't live a life uh, dictated by what others think is better for me, but more of something that is true to me. Some, every choice I make, I take responsibility. Every choice I make, I take full responsibility. And I grow from there. And I grow from there. All right? So, and there's no regrets because every choice is a conscious choice that I make. And that, and, and after making the choice, I tell myself, if, well, it was not the best choice, you see, at least I learned. Now I know. Because why? You can keep analyzing and analyzing, but you won't know until you take the first step. So again, taking baby steps. One step at a time until you master it. And that's how it goes. And that is what I've told myself for many, many years. So instead of sitting here and thinking about it, yeah, I'm, I'm going to think about it so that, okay, so that I can assess to my best ability and then I would just make the choice. And if the choice is not not the best choice and I realize it, then I'll, I'll keep making a better choice and I'll keep choosing, I'll keep choosing until I get, I achieve whatever it is that I have set myself to achieving. Okay, so there's no space and no room for bashing on myself and just focusing on, oh, for me, oh, I regret, oh, and, you know, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Yes, you can do that, but quickly bounce bounce off, you know, bounce back up and do something more constructive. Yeah, so I hope, I hope that, hurt, uh, that helps. And um, we'll take a 15-minute break, and at 9.45, I will have a uh, workshop, a closed uh, group uh, group workshop with everyone. And if you are interested in joining, you can always register um, on the website. It's um, mindful at kachara.com. Is that right, Freon? Mindful at kachara.com. Yeah, you can uh, email to, to the admin and we will send you the link. Okay, and if you do like uh, our program, please, please, please uh, contribute, make a sponsorship to our program because with with the sponsorship, we are able to sustain our online programs for all of you. And if you like our, uh, this program, do share on your Facebook, uh, on your personal Facebook page, so that your friends or your family members can also learn from this. Okay, so on that note, I'll see you next Saturday, same time. Bye-bye.